Sometimes in native script you handle the tap gesture and you just need to know the X and Y coordinates of where you tapped. Can we please have that? Well, it's not built into native script to provide that data, but we can easily get it using native calls. And that's what we're gonna be doing right now. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Alex. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. You'll get NativeScript tips, tricks, and tutorials. And you can ask me questions about NativeScript in the comments down below or on Twitter. I'm at DigitAlex over there. Just like I got a question from Adam, who is trying to get hotspots on images. He wants some parts of the image to be clickable. And yeah, you can do this in NativeScript for sure. There are several different ways of doing this. One way that's not as performant, that might be intuitive, is to create a bunch of transparent buttons or labels on top of the image where you want those areas to be clickable and then handle the tap event there in those specific areas. But we're gonna do a more performant way of doing this. And we're gonna be doing this in two parts. In this part, I'm gonna show you how to actually detect taps on an image. And this actually would work on any UI element in NativeScript because we're gonna be handling the tap gesture and we're gonna be reading the X and Y coordinates of the tap event using native API calls in iOS and in Android. And then in part two, which is coming next week, I'm gonna show you the rest of the tutorial on how to actually get an image map and translate those coordinates that we get into clickable areas. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start off with the Hello World application, slightly modified. This is the TypeScript Hello World template, by the way. And I've just changed this XML to a grid layout with an image inside of it of this cute little puppy. Pretty simple. I've also added this tap event and the on tap handler, which I will need to implement in a second. This is what the app looks like running on iOS and on Android. All right, let's head over here to the code behind file where I need to implement on tap. And of course, this needs to be cleaned up as usual. I still have yet to create a decent template that doesn't have all that comments in there. Anyway, if anybody has any templates out there that they want me to use, let me know export function on tap and this is where we would normally use args and event data and that's fine that's gonna handle this tap on the image itself by the way but we're gonna use something different this time this time we're gonna use oh let me just show you why we're gonna use something different so args has event name and object on it great but we're gonna type this differently we're gonna type this as gesture event data and I'm gonna import that. So right now, you can see that my import actually is from the new at native script slash core namespace. And if you see my video on these new namespaces, check that out if you haven't. You'll know not to use the old TNS core modules namespace along with native script slash core because that's gonna double your memory footprint unless you implement a fix, which I show you how to do in that video. I'll link to it down below. For now, I'm just gonna leave this alone because we're just doing a demo, but normally you don't want both of these types of imports in the same app. So you could do something like this, TNS core modules slash UI slash gestures. All right, I'm just gonna leave this as the default imported one. So we're using gesture event data, getting back on track here. And args dot, you can see that we have a lot more different things available here, which we can now use. By the way, I know that some of you are going to say, oh, why use the tap event if you want to get the location of the tap on that image? Why not use the touch event? Well, we could use the touch event, sure. But what if you're binding the touch event somewhere else and you don't have the ability to use the touch event? Or you must use the tap event for some reason or another. Now, the touch event, sure, that'll give you the X and Y coordinates of your touch. Then you're going to need to write extra code to figure out whether it's a touch up or a touch down. And that's not such a huge deal. But I want to focus on showing you how to do this with on tap for those special cases when you might need that because that's the not straightforward way of doing it. And a lot of things I do on this channel are things that are tricky, things that are not straightforward, and things that you might not find in the documentation. And that's what we're doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some features here to find this out, uh, the location of the X coordinate. So I need the X coordinate. I'm gonna set that initially to zero and Y I'll initialize to zero as well. Now we're gonna be using iOS and Android and you're gonna get different results on iOS and Android and you'll see in a second. So I'm gonna differentiate this. I'm gonna say if we're on iOS, 
Then I'm gonna execute some code, that's for iOS. Otherwise, I'm gonna execute some Android related code. And finally, I wanna go ahead and print these out. So console log, we're gonna get the X value and then I'll just print out the Y value as well here once we get that. All right, so if we're on iOS, we're gonna get args.ios. We're gonna go into the native layer here. So as you can see, iOS is actually typed as any type in TypeScript. We're getting the underlying native iOS UI gesture recognizer, and then that has a function on it. So we're not gonna get any IntelliSense help here, but the function is called location in view, all right? And we're gonna pass in args.ios.view. So that's another property there on the iOS. And then we're gonna get the X value of that once we get the location in view. And X is gonna equal to that. That's gonna be a number. I'm gonna copy this and do the same thing for Y. All right, now let's go test this out. I'm gonna save everything. And we can only test this out on iOS though because it's not gonna work on Android yet. So I'm gonna pop open the iOS console here and do some tapping. So there's a tap. Let me just move this over a little bit here. All right, so you can see that I tapped here. Now notice one thing though, this tap is assigned to the image, right? The tap event is on the image itself, but you might think that, oh, well, I'm tapping outside of the image right here. So why am I getting taps? Well, the way this image is displayed right now is actually, it is taking up the full space on the page. So even this part right here, the white part, that's still part of the image UI view but the actual displayed pixels of the image because we have the scaling set to default and the scaling is set to display the whole image on the page without any shift in the aspect ratio so it's going to be moved down to the middle to display this horizontal image even though the view is still up here as well that would explain why we're getting these taps outside of the visible image area. So if I go in the corner here, you can see that we have X and Y 4, 4, and all the way on this side, 370, 5, 5. Now, these are not pixels. These are device independent pixels or dips. And I talk more about the difference in between those in the styling courses on nativescripting.com, where I go into details about gestures as well. So we're getting that. Now, it's a little different on Android, and you'll see in a second why. So if we want to get the X and Y coordinates on Android, the code for for it is actually simpler, but we're getting different values. So it's gonna be args.android.getx. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Compared to the iOS side. And then for Y, we're gonna get args.android.getY. However, these are not going to be dips. These values that we're gonna get are going to be pixels. So if we head over to our Android console and open the Android simulator or emulator and tap in here, you'll see that we have 2617. And on the other side, we have 1055, 17. So the numbers are pretty big compared to the iOS side. And that's because we're using pixels and not dips here. So we need to convert these to make sure we're speaking the same exact language here. So I'm going to use some utilities to do that. I'm going to import utils and that's coming from native script slash core. All right. And let's head over here and say X equals utils dot layout to device independent pixels and just pass in that X in there. And we're going to do the same exact thing for Y values and pass in Y. So this will perform our conversion. This layout namespace also has to device pixels. So you can do the opposite. And it also has a lot of other useful functions. All right. So once we do that, you'll see now we have dip values instead of pixel values here. So 4.4 and on this side of the screen, it's 3.53 and 4.7. So a little bit more realistic. So now wherever we tap on this image, we're gonna get the location of X and Y coordinates in both iOS and Android. So next week, we're gonna extend this demo and actually use that information that we get to set up an image map. And we're gonna use a literal map here, an image of a map with waypoints on the map. So you can take those points and make them clickable. A pretty common scenario to do in mobile applications without having the overhead of using a Google Maps API, for example. So subscribe to this channel so you won't miss that. And you can also ask me questions on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there. And I will see you in the next video. Happy native scripting.